We're working on problem 13 in section 3.8. That is on page 387. It says evaluate the limit using Hopital's rule if appropriate. So the specific problem is the limit as x goes to 0 of the quantity sine x minus x cosine x, end quantity, divided by tangent cubed of x. OK, so I've taken the liberty of writing that problem down for us. Now, the first observation I'd like to make is you could consider this an indeterminate form in and of itself. It is uh, 0 minus 0 over 0 when x is substituted in, so that's indeterminate. However, you want to make sure everything are, is as simplified as possible, and my standard approach for Hopital's rule is first, algebraically simplify, get it in a, as simple and indeterminate form as possible then apply Hopital's rule, then algebraically simplify. And often it's those two simplifying steps that are just as important and every bit as challenging as taking the derivative. So here we go. Okay, uh, how am I going to simplify this? Well, if I just took the derivative of the denominator here, notice the, you'd have to use the chain rule, and you'd go from the product of three trig functions to using secant squared, and you would have the product of four trig functions. You might go and test it on your own. Uh, that's actually making it more complicated. Why don't we instead write the denominator as sine cubed x over cosine cubed x then I wouldn't want a fraction within a fraction, so I'll clear that out of the denominator by multiplying by cosine cubed x over cosine cubed x. Now, if I were doing this on my own, I wouldn't bother to write this step. I would just write this cosine cubed up there. Those cancel, right? And what am I going to end up with? Well, I'll end up with this times that, which is sine x cosine cubed x minus x cosine to the fourth x over sine cubed x. That might not look wonderful, but I know that the derivative for sine is a lot nicer than the derivative for tangent. Okay, now notice I'm still in an indeterminate form. As x goes to 0, sine of 0 is 0 times whatever minus 0 times something non-zero, so that's 0 in the numerator. Sine cubed of 0 is still 0, so we have 0 over 0. Now, that was algebraic simplification. To indicate that I'm now taking the derivatives, I'll write a little LH for Hopital. And I will now take the derivative of the numerator. Uh, I have to use the chain rule here, right? So the derivative of the first is cosine x times cosine cubed x. That'll be cosine to the fourth x once I simplify, once I combine terms. Then leave the first alone, so sine x times 3 cosine squared x using the chain rule on this cosine cubed times negative sine x. That's all from this first term. Now I've got to use the product rule on the second, minus cosine to the fourth x. That's negative x. Its derivative is just negative 1. Now I'll leave the negative x alone, take the derivative of the cosine to the fourth x, using the chain rule. That's 4 cosine to the third x times the derivative of that, which is negative sine x. Okay, compared to that, taking the derivative of sine to the third x is quite easy. 3 sine squared x times, using the chain rule, cosine x. Got to be careful there. Now, here again, you might panic and try to use the uh, try to use Hopital's again. You need to pause. You need to use algebraic simplification techniques. So, first thing that you might notice is, hey, I have a cosine to the fourth x. I have a negative cosine to the fourth x. Those two cancel. Next, you might notice, hey, all three of these terms have a sign in them. This has a sign, another sign, sine squared. This only has one sign, this has sine squared. So I could divide both the numerator and the denominator by sine x. 
Uh, also notice that this has a cosine squared, cosine to the third. Ooh, I could divide the top by cosine squared, but the denominator only has one cosine. So I will divide every single term by sine x cosine x. This term, once divided, becomes negative 3 sine x cosine x. I take out one sine, one cosine. This term, double negative, becomes a positive 4 x. Take out one sine, one cosine, so that ends up being two cosines. The denominator, one sine, one cosine, three sine x. It's a lot simpler here. Now I'm still at an indeterminate form. As x goes to zero, of course, three sine x is zero, but also the numerator, sine x is zero, so this term is zero, x is zero. So we still get the privilege of using Hopital's rule one more time, but uh, hopefully it will be simpler now. My, my Justification for that is not the numerator, but the denominator. The derivative there will be 3 cosine x. I know that's not going to be 0 as x goes to 0. That bodes well for being done after the step. I still have to use the product rule here. I have negative 3 cosine x times cosine x. Then taking the derivative of the second term gives me positive 3 sine x sine x. Remember the derivative of cosine is negative sine, that's why I changed the sine there. Have to use the product rule here, so plus 4, derivative of the first times the second. Now leave the first alone, 4x times 2, cosine to the 1, x, sine x. There we have it. Uh, let's see what happens if I plug in 0 at this point using substitution. This term gets me negative 3 times 1 times 1. This term gets me 0. This is positive 4 times 1 times 1. This term gets me, oh, and I left out a little negative there, 0. The denominator gets me 3, so that's 4 minus 3 is 1 third. Isn't that great?